If you somehow managed to click on this video without seeing the title, there's still a very good chance that you would know the name of this bag. I mean, you wouldn't be able to pronounce it properly, but that's not the point, I guess. Hey team, welcome back to another Levi Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. Today we are going to be talking about the Fjall Raven conk and backpack which I've got on my back right now and we're going to figure out whether or not it's worth all the hype that it receives. Now if you saw last week's video where I talked about what was in my bag, you'll know that I don't really like the Konkin that much. It doesn't really work for my daily use, but Leah quite likes it. So you'll get both of our perspectives, but first, we need to talk about why this thing is so popular. And the reality is we have to recognize that this backpack is iconic. First released in 1978, the Swedish outdoorsman Aki Norden invented a simple double-strapped backpack for school children to carry all their school supplies. This wholesome start sparked the worldwide popularity that we see today for a few simple reasons. First off, this bag is well designed and more importantly, nice to look at. The oversized handles, boxy shape, and the single outside pocket is a refreshing bit of simplicity in a world of darkly covered utility bags that look like you're trying to live out of them. This absolutely timeless look, which by the way hasn't changed in the over 40 years since it was designed originally, actually won them the Glukenblatt Gul... Gul... Gouldnoppen, the Gouldnoppen Accessory Design Prize in 2018 and has since become a bit of a cultural icon within Swedish culture. <laughs> Actually, while I was researching for this video, I learned that in some cases, these backpacks can be handed down through generations. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? But like with most things, the creation of the internet changed the Konkin's trajectory forever. This colorful, simplistic backpack happens to be perfect Instagram fodder. The iconic shape with the vibrant colors makes it the perfect accent piece, whether you're on the trail or on the bus. Soon, these cute little Swedish backpacks were popping up in news feeds and closets all over the world. But this was just the beginning. The Konkin backpack was originally designed for school kids and I don't know what you were like when you were a kid, but I drew on stuff. So the Konkin backpack became an unlikely source of self-expression. People would stitch into, draw on, and customize these backpacks to suit their own personality. Fjall Raven then jumped on this trend, creating the Konkin official Instagram account and proliferating hashtags like my Konkin or Konkin backpack. Now, children's backpacks and arts and crafts don't exactly sound like things you would associate with an outdoor adventure company, but the Konkin is born out of the same ideological base as all of the rest of Fjall Raven's products, durability and sustainability. The longer a product lasts, the less impact there is on the planet. If you don't have to replace that backpack, there's one less bag in the landfill. All the energy, resources, and time put into creating it are wasted. This very basic idea flies in the face of fast fashion and underpins a lot of the outdoor adventure companies you see today. I talked about this built to last idea in my Birkenstocks video, and I firmly believe that the longer that you own something, the more that it becomes a part of your daily routine, the more that you fall in love with it, and the more that you identify it as a part of your identity. Fjall Raven, by making their gear rugged and easily repairable, has given consumers that opportunity to cherish and love their products. So Fjall Raven encourages repair and customization for one, because they know that you developing a very personal relationship with their brand is more important than getting you to buy another $90 backpack, but also because it's better for the planet. Fjall Raven's design principles are firmly rooted in environmental practices. This focus and this energy is what underpins the Konkin success and is probably part of the reason why it became so popular. Think about it. 
if Konkin was just a well-designed bag that fell apart immediately, people would not develop that emotional connection to it. If it was a rugged bag that was super ugly, nobody would have bought it in the first place. If you want to know more about the incredible environmental practices that Fjall Raven is putting into play, and how that directly relates to the price tag that you see on the store shelves, I highly recommend checking out a video made by my friend Charlie over at Our Changing Climate. He did an incredible breakdown that demystifies a lot of that dollar value that we see as so high. Not to ruin Charlie's video or anything, but we both do agree that if you need to buy a new bag, which is a big if because you can always use the one that you have or find something secondhand. If you do need a new bag, Konkin is a great option because they do have those environmental safeguards in place for their company that they are firmly dedicated to. That being said though, I am a little surprised that they are not a certified B Corporation or a part of 1% for the planet for that matter. Did you know that this channel donates 1% of every single dollar that it makes to an environmental nonprofit? Pretty neat, huh? But environmental factors aside, which they shouldn't be in my perspective, should you buy this backpack? So Leah and I got the Fjall Raven Reconken backpack, which is a sibling to the classic Konkin design, but this one's made out of 11 recycled plastic bottles. The two bags are very, very similar. Uh, this one happens to be $10 more expensive, which is kind of lame. But really, the only difference between the two is that this one does not have a white badge where the logo sits, and when you're done with this one, you can just recycle it, which is pretty neat. Now, Leah and I agree on most things. I mean, we've been happily married for almost a year now. I mean, <laughs> come on, that's gotta speak for something. But when it comes to the Konkin, we have very different perspectives. Let's be clear. I'm the one who actually uses the Konkin on a day-to-day -day basis. Leah pretty well took possession of this thing as soon as we got it, so my perspective is just based on us using it while we were traveling. So this backpack fits my 13-inch laptop, plus all of the things I'll need for a full day at school. This thing is just way too small, and it only has two pockets. The outside pocket is perfect for my wallet and keys, and really just a few small essentials. The straps have no padding whatsoever. The straps are nice and thin. Why is this handle on the top so big? This top handle is super cute. Oh, and these side pockets don't even fit a water bottle. The outside pocket doesn't fit my water bottle, which is kind of strange, but it does fit my cell phone and my glasses case. Also, it's yellow. You gotta love the yellow. So, in my opinion, this bag lacks a lot of the modern luxuries that we kind of need on a daily basis in the 21st century. Padding on the straps, proper sized pockets, and a dedicated space for laptops and other tech equipment. Hilariously, on their website, they mention that this pocket is not designed to carry laptops. They do have laptop versions of the Konkin, but they have way fewer colors and are $10 more expensive. I prefer function over fashion. I would rather have a backpack that helps me do all of my daily activities with greater ease. But if fashion is more important to you, then this is probably the best backpack you can buy on the market today. Not only is it durable, customizable, and repairable, but this iconic brand image is likely to stand the test of time. In the world of fast fashion that we're in right now, very few products survive as long as the Konkin has. But of course, I probably don't need to remind you that if you already have a bag, you do not need to buy a new one. If you already have something that works, use it. If you don't, check out a thrift store or consignment store near you to pick up something used. But before we sign off completely, I want to make a little announcement. 
I have just launched my Patreon page. On this Patreon page, I plan to be posting photos and videos of my behind the scenes process, little hints and teasers to videos that are coming up next, and also a new secret podcast style AMA session that I'm going to have once a month where I talk about some of the topics and the subject matters that I'm talking in videos, but a little bit more in depth, as well as answering any questions that you might have on there for me. I'm really nervous and excited. Asking for money is always kind of a weird thing, but if you feel like you wanna support this channel beyond your eyeballs, beyond your comments, that is the place to do it. And I really feel like you'll get something fun out of it. The first podcast is set to go live at the end of August, so be a little patient with me on that front. But if you're interested at all, the link is down in the description. I look forward to having you over there. But regardless of your interest in the conk and whether you're Team Leah or Team Levi, I want to thank you for watching this video, for taking the time out of your day to spend some time with me, because I really appreciate that. And if you're subscribed to this channel, we will see you in the next one.